kaaina i ka pono Hawaii malama ia na ivi pula ma ia na ku. Okay, so now that you know the secret, it costs you nothing, except do I want to do it now or do I want to do it later, procrastination. So it's up to you how you perceive in your best interest for your family, how this fits in, because nobody want to strategize on the board. Okay, we'll take them down on January 1st. We're going to attack them with a social media blast, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that, you know, and it's like, no. That's too much work. You know, that really is too much. You know, God is very generous. He just said, put in the paper, I will do the lifting. So pick and choose, knock yourself out if you want more work that you don't have to do, or just plop it in because, hey, you got a better offer? <laughs> you know, it's already, the work has already been done for you. He loves you so much. You just take out the stuff that don't apply, put in the stuff. You want more? I gave a thousand exhibits if you want to do an attachment. So, there is a purpose, there is a plan. So, as soon as they start drilling up on Mauna Kea, that's the end of the state. When the mo'o comes out and they find everything that was said that was up there, it's confirmed. You guys lose buckwheat, it's over. And you can see them nervous already, trying to go fast to squeeze out everything before it's gone. They know it, they can smell it. You know, it's the, it's the pool of possibility when you throw in the truth, it goes out and then the backlash wave comes. Woo and it's even stronger than it went out. They can feel it coming back and they know they're gonna get squashed. They're running like rats. So before the rat dies and the dragon coughs up blood, uh, that is gonna be the end. So when that happens, I won't give a specific date, that's not good to do. It's just good to see Kyoko's track. That's better. When that track happens, it's over. So, this I'm going to say, and I'm going to throw out this date because this date keeps on streaming by 2029. By 2030, the kingdom is there, the Mo'i is there, it's up and running, and this Mo'i is not like any other. He completes Kamehameha. It's Kamehameha third two. Whoever she or he is, Keokua says, I know my people. They never agree on anything, so my hand is going over that person, and they will see whatever they do, nothing can prevail. That's number one. Number two is my cousin, and I won't mention her name because she's going to get pissed off at me. She saw that person's going to get shot in the head. Because you know, the power structure of the dragon ain't going to be happy when that stuff happens in the real. We saw Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, the list goes on, Gandhi. So hello, as more things change, the more they stay the same. So a lot of people who have seen this, oh, I ain't, I ain't the, the one going back. But the transitional moi'i, because you are already sovereign, why do you need a moi'i? You are the kings and queens. Because they can't, you can kill one king, but you can't kill a nation. That moi'i is a pivot moi'i. What, what do you mean by pivot? Acknowledge it that God, Keokua, is the moi'i. And they're just there to assist the people community bill and nation bill so they can pivot out. They bring you in at the card table, which you're already at, and they pivot themselves out, but they assist in the people being the power. Because we saw what happened by history. Our kings and queens could not overpower the power as the executive. So the completion of the great Mahele is yet to come. And that is in the pivot. And what the pivot says, Everybody in their ili and moku are the kings and queens. No DLNR. No DLNR. The people come together to do a constitutional convention and a reset of the royal patents to reset. And by the way, the US, you should put a super fund of $300 million to pay all the people you suckered and said in a lie, because you're the perps and we're the vics that this land belonged to you, and you suckered everybody from China, Canada, and everything to buy land that was never theirs in the beginning. You know, 
and we didn't do it. You did it. So where's the $300 million super fund to pay them for your lies and deception? Because that's the truth, you know? And that's why they come out with the jackboot thugs, because they know somebody's going to have to pay. Now, let's do this Kyokuo's way. He showed me as the master creator craftsman, Blan Kua. He creates a blonde Kua bow. And this blonde Kua bow is perfect. But guess what? I'm going to blow your minds. Perfect is not perfect. What do you mean perfect is not? It's perfect. God made it. It's blonde core. All the wood grains and the light hit it, and the, it dances like rainbow. It's perfect. No, it's not. He's going to show you what perfect perfect is. This is just perfect. But it has to be perfect perfect. This is the Hawaiian people, and this is his mission in a parable. I create the bowl that has to be better than perfect. Okay, so then you take the bowl and drop it. <laughs> it's good for nothing. It's all shattered. I can't use it anymore. It's not perfect. He said, oh yeah, in my hand, it'll be more than perfect. I'm going to show you the definition of more than perfect that's real and true. Kiakua slaps six butterflies. You can't even see the crack. The crack doesn't seem to exist, but it was there. Plus, he added six butterflies. So perfect became more perfect because in its imperfection, he showed how perfect he is to make it useful again. You can't see the crack, and it has more than it had when it was perfect. This is the human vessel that is cracked and busted to the world. The virgin who's not the virgin. The person who had all these high ideals and got bust up and broken and useless, not even to themselves. And Kiyoko said, oh yeah, boom, 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 butterfly. So now you're more than perfect because when you were perfect, you didn't know what imperfect was. So now you're, you were perfect, now you got this bigger knowledge of imperfection and basa. I put you together, now you're perfect knowing what imperfect from perfect is. So you're three times more perfect. Tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me what I say is absolutely wrong, you liar. I'm not lying. This is the Hawaiian people. The, nation, the, the, the land had to be busted because he knew the world was going to get busted. And as Papa Bray said, the world needs a pattern and model of success of what is real and true. He seeded in time when wake-up time is. He told me, and I was doing my genealogy in 1831, I said, oh my God, you created all of this. You, you caused all of this. You caused the missionaries to come in. You, 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 you're the one. Yeah, he said, I'm the one. You out me. I'm the one. I did it. I take full responsibility. And I'm going, why? He said, you got to realize I got one eye in 1831 and one eye in the future. I see the six billion different lines, the Akka chords that are in the future. This was the best of the worst. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I enfolded you through the greed of the missionaries that brought my true word, but lusted after your land. That was the bait to get them down here. So I would enfold them in the kappa imperfectly. So when it's my time, I just pull the kappa and you all roll up. Because there's no legal binding and stitching to hold you. He said, I saw in the future, in World War II, you would have all been wiped out like Manchu Kuo. There is no more allodial title living holders, placeholders, space holders, or stakeholders. You're all dead like Manchu Kuo. 200,000 Chinese, men, women, and children slaughtered by the Japanese. This was Hawaii's future if I didn't enfold you to protect you. Okay? So I did it the way that I saw that you couldn't see. And when it's my time, I'm just going to pull, and you guys are going to all unravel and spit it out. That's the process. Yeah? So people have wondered, how does this come, and where does God fit into it, and why the heaven, and what, you know, and then carry the burden. No, don't carry a burden that doesn't belong to you. You got enough rocks on your shoulder. Oh, he asked very little, very ass. Have a relationship with me. Do the right thing for the right reason, you know? Walk humbly.
Because if you don't walk humbly, there's no room for anybody else. Your head is so swollen up. Nobody can fit in the front door, not even me. You know, mm, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. We, I can't even get through the window. So tell me that's not real and true in your experience. So Kekua said, look, be good to yourselves and be good to other people. Because in the end, to have the nation, you're going to have to forgive all the betrayers of your family and everybody else. There will be a Nelson Mandela moment when all the guys who were fighting against all the Keokua guys, to be truly believers, you're going to have to forgive because we all want family. Yeah? To move on, we cannot hold hatred and anger because those are the knots that bind you to a heva anger that keeps on burning. You got to let them go. Truly, let them go because you cannot move forward if you're tied up in the knots of jealousy and anger and retribution, even though they were stupid, dumb, and foolish, and you want to just throw a stone at them. Auli, in a holy manner, and you know, it's like, you're driving me crazy, God. You're driving me crazy. So in the real world of our humanity, we want a really false crack. A couple of guys who are on the other side of the fence, we're not going to name you in Makua, and they were pleading to save Makua, and then when they got a state job, they're on the other side of the fence saying, you can't come in. So is it bought and paid for or whatever to be governor? But what is real and true, everybody knows, you got a na'au, you can see through walls by experience. You know people who are close to people because they're stuck together by distance. Yeah, if someone's really close to somebody, oh, I know what's going on there. You know, no matter who or what the situation, your eyes do not betray what experience is all about. So human beings can bridge the gap between the known and the unknown, because you got a brain and you got a na'au. So relieve yourself of the burden that doesn't belong to you. Now, let's get into some of the details to help you in process. Genealogy created by Keokua, there's the, there's the Hawaiian way of thinking and there's the American way of thinking. The Hawaiian kingdom, which drives everybody crazy today, was back in the 1800s, was only 50,000 people as the, the plagues were just whittling us down from 400,000 down. Everybody knew everybody. So try and find your grandfather's name when Kino Puth is 36 of them. And you should put, you're supposed to find out the one, the one and only, okay? You can get birth documents and everything that is not in, you know, they, they didn't start taking records on Oahu for death and everything till um, the 1870s. And they didn't put the parents of the people to 1904 on Oahu. So you're trying to do your due diligence and give to Caesar what Caesar asks. And you go, oh my God, it's not there. Oh, it is. In the, in the deeds, they voila out. I got this from my grandfather who's so-and-so and my uncle and my mom and blah, 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 so-and-so. And it's certifiable. You can get your genealogy from the deeds. You just have to work. The tragedy of the great Maheli. This is what must never be repeated again in history. They never taught the Kanakas how you get back that in your, in the next generation. What am I talking about? The portfolio? Everybody says, well, grandpa came from the Big Island. Guess what? He had family on Kauai, Niihau, and Maui, and they went back and forth. How do you know that? Names of 88 different canoes. Why do you have 88 different canoes when you only need five to get back? Because they're all different kinds. Because we were going back two years on Molokai, helped the family out. One year on Kauai, helped the family out. Back on Oahu, in between, to help the family out. And bing, boom, visit on the big island. Their back and forth was more than Aloha Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines combined. So in DLNR, what do they tell you? They tell Kanakas, you cannot leave your ahu pu'a'a. And I said, are you, you think we're farmers in the Midwest, Nebraska, and we came from Germany and stayed on a 100-acre farm for our entire lives? That's what they're saying we are. We, you don't go out of your ahupua'a. Based on what chant are you talking? Kuali'i went everywhere. He's in 
Connie Healy ever picking three limos. And he goes off to Hilo picking some of the same limo when he jump off the double hau canoe. That's two ahuas already. On what basis are you basing what is real and true? You're making it up, you dummy. So the bottom line is don't let people define who you are. You are a work in progress. So the thing is, they're trying to define and capture the narrative and squeeze you in their mental box. Uh, Ole. Uh, Ole. Wrong. Ole Pono. Wrong, 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 based on nothing, 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 except waha. Make it up. This whole thing is a lie with more tissues of lies. You can tell when your land is being cockroach, they got so much pala pala. All you need is two things. They sold it. They bought it. Here's the name. It's really the portfolio is really open and shut. I will tell you where the crime came in. Kamehameha III made it really simple in his constitution. You buy land in 31 days, you register it. The revised constitution of 1864 allowed for fraud because 17 later, years, 19 years later, you can put in the transaction that happened 19 years later. Brother's dead already, and you paid his, his living family to make up stories as witnesses that is all in real and true, and now you finally cockroach the land that never belonged to you because you had 19 years to wait for Tutu to die. Okay, what is real and true? So that literally opened up the death, the, the doors to kill the kings. I have a certified copy from um, George Davis Whale, the son of of Isaac Davis, whereby this 94,000 acre royal patent on the Big Island from Waimea all the way down to Pohakuloa and all the way, 94,000 acres, you take Kaho Olave and Niha, put them together, not enough, still more. And this is Alodio, okay, the biggest Alodio big chunk in the world, okay. It might have cost Kamehameha V his life because the ministers have always been from the missionaries, salivating all along. And in this document, the fraud is so fraudulent because Kamehameha V died in um, 1872 on December 11th. The royal patent is signed Kamehameha December 12th, 1872, the day after he died, he got up like Lazarus, signed the damn thing, or they put the pen in his hand, and they signed it. And by the way, it wasn't his signature, because he signs it either El Kamehameha, Lot Kamehameha, and he signs it either Kamehameha Rex. And when he signs it, it's never one. It's Kamehameha. He breaks it up. It's called graphology, which is a discipline that is recognized in court. This thing is a fraudulent document. And to make it more fraudulent, the survey notes that were done showed that there's missing stuff here. They, need, they rename pu'us that do not exist. One pu'u in the fraudulent doctrine, the document which is here, they don't put in a lot of the survey notes that is mandated for every royal patent, highlight, highlighted, highlighted on the royal patent for a particular reason, yeah? The ministers were waiting. Kamehameha V holds a luau, gets sick that night, dies, and this document comes out, yeah? So George Isaac Huel dies and his son, that is the husband of Princess Ruth, that's part of the estate. You see where I'm going here? Collusion, even at the time of our kings. Corruption, the seed of corruption comes in the front door in the constitution. What is right and true and what will kill you if you don't follow the right and true. You know? So there are implications in documentation that the hunger for the grave and lust and greed takes down people, it bites people with the poison. Yeah, because greed, when you unmask greed, the truth of greed is death. Yeah, all the mafia, greed, break your legs. All of the guys who, um, loan sharks, yeah, it's greed. You unmask greed and death is there, the skull is there. And, and the problem, the way people look at it, 
is they say, yeah, we got to have meritorious people. Well, the capos are meritorious. They crack heads and break kneecaps, and they do a great job in, in burying them in the ocean. They're very meritorious to go up the line of the mafia. So that's not enough. Being meritorious is not enough. You also have to be virtuous. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Boy, you're going to get a bullet in your head <laughs> because the grave of lust and greed, it's an enemy. How else can we get in on it? Yeah, the rotten corruption that we see feeding off the carcass of the kingdom right here, right now. Why? We needed to live a lesson that we were refused to learn on our own. Because Konahiki is the guys who taught us what God put in to our purpose. Okay? So you have to orientate what is this all about, Alfie? Life is for the strong, Alfie. You know, it's like singing over and over again and people are not getting it. Yeah, so the process is very important. Give you some helpers. In the royal patents, most people go after this, LCA, royal patent. But what people don't go after, and I'm giving you the tidbit, is the survey notes of LCAs and royal patents. What do you mean survey notes? You had to, in the, the law, survey your property for the land commission to see if other people made the same claim and theirs was higher. So they had to untangle those knots, yeah? And so the survey notes were done from 1847 to 18, uh, almost by 1850 to survey the claim that was being made is, was real and true. In the survey notes, it's in a box 294, and it's either in the LCA or the Royal Patent. So just because you can't find it in the LCA for that, your, your tutu's property, then go to the Royal Patent. It's in one or the other. It comes out with gold. It has maps that were never published. And in those maps, this is Kuhi Helani um, on his Maui, uh, 900 acre property, it shows where the Konahiki ceremonies were done and where the gods were left. And so it's like, oh my God, it's establishing Hawaiian native cultural practice, Article 12, Section 7. And it starts, it starts showing all the stuff that were not necessarily important to that, but they were writing down as reporters in time what was there in 1847. It can be used in court to establish your family's traditional cultural practice. Also, please read the inventory because they'll talk about the trees were there. They'll name the caves that were there and they put the burials that are there. So when you're going for the burial council that you're lenial and you're to, to own it, it's already done for you. It's a reporter. Most people look at that and their eyes fuzz over. Mm -hmm. And they don't bother to go, the kukui nut trees were there. It inventories what they planted there. It, um, it goes into some detail, the name of the pu'us. I told you the pu'u here is wrong from the survey note. The survey note says this pu'u is named pu'u anu anu, the coal pu'u, the coal cinder cone. Okay, that tells you something. And on the fake thing, it says pu'u anu anu, the rainbow pu'u. Okay, the rainbow pu'u and the coal pu'u, there's a big difference in these pu'us. Why? Okay, don't get too into it. You, you dig a hole and go to China. So at some point, you have to, okay, I got them. I don't have to push forward. You know, you got just so much time. So that's one thing to help you out. The other thing to help you out is because everybody knew everybody and you're sworn under oath, uh, whether it's the, the um, native register, foreign register, native testimony, foreign testimony, the inventory at the height of the Konehiki knowing what to plant, what was their inventory that they were planting. And what people miss, because they're not cultural practitioners, is it tells you what the land is. It tells you what's under the land. Because I can tell what's in the ocean by looking at the trees on the land. I don't have to go in the ocean. I can tell you what variety of limu by looking at the shells. Because only certain shells love certain limus. So I don't even have to go and do an inspection of the sea. I just stay on the land and look at the shells, and I look at the tree, and I know already what's in the ocean. And the springs. So what they put down is what you call kukua la'au, what the land can hold, yeah? So it's not pick and choose and wonder in. You don't need to wonder. You just go and look, do some due diligence to see at its 
best what's there. In Kauai, they talk about the night marchers and the pepiao, and they go into everything, and they start vala out. That is your family cultural heritage <coughs> certified. Rules of evidence can put in court. The reason why you're doing this is you get a stamp, and after you get a stamp, you PDF your stamp page, and you mail out certified mail to the county, to DLNR, and by the way, number your pages, because this is how the fraud comes in. You don't number your pages, they pull out a page that is the most important, and they said, oh, you never gave it to us. You know, this is the stupid, this is the stupid thing. You never gave it to us. Prove you gave it to us. You know, you didn't go to every page and initial every page with my initial. I said, I number the pages. Why would I leave out that page? If you don't number it, they can say, you never put no page in here. Where's the number? Okay. So it's, it's the same thing when people call me. They say, call back because you obviously have caller ID. I'm poor. I have no such thing. So they get mad at me because I was too high and mighty not to call you. Well, you never gave me my number, you know, ever. So how am I supposed to find you? So simple little things cut you at your knees because you never number your pages. It's that simple. Now, the reason why you have them sign, you, you mail it out. You invest in your future and your children's future. Whether it's 10, 10 envelopes that they have to sign for it, that's proof you got it. Whether you want to know it, whether you read it or not, you got it. The onus is on you, brother, sister. Okay? You cannot come back at me and say, I don't know. I never got it. See that? You got it. And if you never look at it on you, you're responsible. You and your staff. Um, so either you know, you're incompetent and you should be out of that job uh, or you're basically not fit for that job. Or you have administrative bias. Oh, that Hawaiian thing again. It's illegal. And you got the proof because you're building the better burger. You have to show in a box that A, you are playing in Hawaii, not mainland royal patents because they didn't create ours. So it's called subject matter jurisdiction. The subject is us under Kamehameha III, and they love to play, they love to pull you. Well, you're under the federal government, so we're gonna play with America. And I said, did America create the royal patents? No, so we ain't playing. And by the way, where's your bill of sale that you own it? Where's the Kuwait petition? Um, where is the plebiscite? Um, uh, you know the, um, the or, um, what do you call it, the Admissions Act? Where's Article One, Section 1 that says you got this place from no exist, that one, that one. Oh, and what about the Newlands Resolution that goes against the constitutional, the constitution um, where the, the Congress said, we have the right to claim any land in the world, Germany, England, and Hawaii, because we say so. Where's that in the constitution in the supremacy clause that lays out you can't do any foreign things, Congress? It's a, a political question with the executive branch, okay? So you go, you're violating everything that you're saying and you're making up everything in between. So what right do you have to weave more bullshit my way? You know, because I got, in time, the highest, greatest interest. Show me yours. I show you mine. I show me yours. You know, put it on the table. I want to see how long it is. Your connection to the real deal. When did your uh, tutus get the royal patent and LCA? So... It's a shell game. Don't look this way, look that way. They're always saying look that way, don't look this way. So be focused because it's built on steps. Yeah? It's called foundational cause. You go to court, you have to show cause of foundation before you admit any evidence. And you know, I never talked like this before, I'm forced to. I never cared about being lawyer and uh, expert in expert in great Mahele and, and Mahele law documents and kingdom law. I can tell you about Queen Emma getting her 5,000 acres back of forest that for the tenant that chopped down her forest, she went to court, got all the money back plus the land. She was a great businesswoman with so much integrity that Kanakas would go to her to be their land manager. And see, the, this goes to the great sin of the Mahele. The, the royal school, the Ali'is knew what they had to do. And in this document, 
I add Queen Kalama going to the kingdom court to get Kamehameha's land that he gave her in the will. She had to go to court and secure it, which most Kanakas didn't know you had to do. Queen Emma, when her family died, she went to court, brought it back. Because the allodial title, what it does is it gives you the right forever for all the equal tenant rights of your children and great-grandchildren forever. Okay, but you have to turn it on when the tutu who had it died to bring it back in the fold. Kanakas didn't know that. That's one thing they didn't know. The second thing was, what was grandpa's portfolio? He had land on all islands, but the story only talked about Big Island. Wrong. Yeah, wrong. So you have to go beyond the known. Yeah, this is where Kiokua comes in because you have to pray. You can't keep... This is a spiritual thing from the beginning. You're on his dime. This is Kekua's dime. And if you don't collect the dime, you don't ask, you don't get your fault. Very simple. Hoss like water, hoss come to water. Okay? Go God's way. Everything be A-OK. -okay. Thank you, Ale Auntie Alice. You know, always stick in my brain. Boop, boop. Um, simple but truisms of reality of Kekua and his master plan. So... When you do this, you make all these copies, you give it to all the agencies, you get the green paper back, the pala pala saying you did, and then you make copies. So when they come to evict you, you already got this, here's a copy of your signed stuff, get out of my face. Because what subject matter jurisdiction do you have to make your authority claim here based on what law? You don't own the land. Article one, section one, I'm the people who create the law. Get off my land. Possession is nine-tenths percent of the law. I'm possessing it. I'm here. I showed up. I'm carrying my water. Get off my land. I don't care. you jackboot thugs. Don't wipe your messy stuff on my grass. Okay? That's when you reclaim your sovereignty that you already have, but you have to connect it with the concrete. Don't do that. You get arrested for assault. But the point I'm trying to make is... Hawaiians have been at the table and don't know they own everything. And what they are told is, you come to make Kamehameha school, so you should be lucky that the next generation can come, that's all you got. And so, the, you know, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? Because the Kanaka scream, so they get, the thief, the United States, has stole the Kavila the car. You complain and they say, okay, here's the cigarette lighter, go away. And the allodial patent of ownership is right in the glove compartment. Your name is on it. But you have to exercise your right, or it's called tacit approval. Because you don't care, and you don't stand up, and you don't exercise under palapala pala what is yours. They push you around with a big push. And the thing is, beat it. Because you have no subject matter jurisdiction here on any level based on your law. So in your face, this is you, in your face. You know, don't do that, because then they get excited and give you a crack. Do it in a holy manner, you know. I, I'm my own worst messenger, because the, the anger comes out in this. The humanity comes out, because we know this is so hurtful and injurious that is cumulative. It continues. So we so kamahapuhiva now, now, now. We want this done now that Kalama Iao, it really grates. You know, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So to stay focused and to stay on Keokua's track is very challenging because our humanity wants to bite and wants to howl. And that's only human. So in this process of A, B, C equals D in a logical manner, this helps you get the first step Understand, if your great-great-grandmother had a sister in the 1800s, she's also the wife of your grandfather. Minimum, Hawaiians back in the 1800s had nine husbands or wives. And the reason why is we were dying out. And the call was to keep the race going because of smallpox, chickenpox, the flu. Our, we went from 400 plus thousand from... Uh, Lieutenant um, King uh, 
first officer of Captain Cook, and they bumped it up to 800,000, to at the time of the Kuwait petition, 37,000. So we were dying as a race. So we are all the survivors of the survivors, and we all are family. So, and by, by the way, we're all sovereign, thanks to Kamehameha III. We're all the kings and queens of our own castle. Absolute title. Cannot put a lien, cannot take that land away because you're the king of that land. Unlike the mainland, they're just allowed to play on the US land and can be taken away at any time, any place. Now, to let you know, if you did treason, the king could take back the land because you broke the covenant. Now, let me tell you that genius, there is no way under the Mahele that a foreign power can get this land because when, Ke when Keakua and Kamehameha three tied it in, the receiver to get this land forever must be Hawaiian. There has to be a Hawaiian president to receive under the conditions of this, the Hawaiian land. Hawaiian to blood Hawaiian. It cannot go any of, that's what Elodio means. He cannot hold it unless he's Kanaka because the kingdom nationals that were Haole could only get free whole fee simple. Even the closest ministers that were beloved by Kamehameha III got the fishery rights of Maui with the provision, once you die, it comes back to the kingdom. Unless you marry a Kanaka girl and unless you have children, then it can come into a lodio and pass on to a lodio. But you can only have fee whole, fee simple as long as you're not of the club, the Coco Club. That's a nice name for a club. So, <laughs> happy hour. So, Let's get real and human. So in this process of going from point A to point B, it is impossible for a non-Hawaiian to have the forever in your of this land, 4.2 million acres, impossible, cannot. When, okay, another point. Kamehameha III was different from every other king. He was not only chief executive by decree of himself and constitutional monarchy, but he held the allodium, which is everything, on his lap by his uli uli, okay? It's based on his uli uli, holds up everything. Hawaiians, I'm leaving it to that. Look it up in the dictionary out there because kids are watching. So he was different from all the other kings. And what I am saying is, he says in the great Mahele, I got this from my father who conquered not all islands, this uh, never got conquered. Keokua always protect this island from everything. So we will just say, for the good of the, the thought, okay, it was held in trust, the allodium, 4.2 acres on his uli uli. That's the only way you can transmit it, yeah? By right of inheritance of blood. That's why he had plenty of kids, plenty of kids. But that's why he never, yeah, he never named them. Queen Kalama adopted four and five. He always kept the distance because he knew the rules. The shame was he didn't teach the people the rules. The royalty knew the rules, but to sustain the, the power of their sovereignty, they needed to go back to court and claim it like the, the Ali'is were. So that was the mistake. So he had tons of kids. He was just making, he's a kid maker. Um, plus, he had Hulumanu and Aikanaka. So Brada had a buffet and a luau going on all his life. Okay. So the bottom line was, and they were also um, offices that, um, you know, again, I'll keep it Hawaiian so we keep it clean. Um, so in the reality of what is real and true, he knew if he had a known heir, the uli uli would pass to the uli uli. And that's a different story. Because King David Kalakaua, most of you don't know, he tried to trade piece of California for Hawaii. While the Marnik, he could not. Because the way this was set up is no other chief executive had the inure and had the allodium that he was holding. Their placeholders, stakeholders, yeah? They cannot pass what isn't theirs. They're just chief executive. They don't own it. They never did. They just have the Kamehameha last name. Only three who then took 
and quit claim title to his people and gave it to his people. The largest share is in the Ali'i Konahiki, you know, more than the um, native tenant, but the native tenant was never extinguished from the table of the card game, but never knew the power because it wasn't, it was implied. They left off, you the one, you the one. I'm the one, you the one. Hey, I'm the one, so get off my land. Yeah, that's why they, it's implied, okay. So it's that knowledge that separates. That's why in Oha, the tax for 50 acres to turn it to 50 cents has to be done, the royal patent, by Kamehameha III. None of the, the monarchs after that, they were just placeholders for the chief executive. They never owned the land. So Kamehameha III knew the rules right up and he made sure that none of all his tons of children would ever be named because what holds this fraud together in Rice versus Cayetano, U.S. Supreme Court with a Pilau Oha attorney, when the Supreme Court said, was there perfect title, was there a correct title? And the lawyer said, yes, which is a lie. When you go to what's holding this fraud up, this is what's holding up. The state declares there's no heir of Kamehameha III that was legitimate that the uli uli, everything sits on those testicles. And that's their claim of grabbing Hawaii, is because there's no legitimate heir. Yes. Oh, yes. So the bottom line is, whether it's from Nahi Ana Ana or whatever, you know, because several kids from her, you know, 1829 and second daughter, and, you know, it goes through, okay. There's heirs, 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 but this whole thing is based on that fraud. It's the fulcrum of the fraud. They out themselves, like all these documents out their fraud, they even named themselves. One of the ministers of King David Kalakaua, La'amea, he takes away Keho Kalole, David Kalakaua's land, and the minister is signing in place of the king. Well, Kalakawa is singing and playing. He's being ripped off by his advisors. Yeah, right on popcorn. So, um, you know, you got you to gotta keep the eye on business, the candy store, or you're going to get ripped off, man, because we have a history. We needed this history because it's the pattern and model of failure. So we are learning what not to do, okay? When we move forward, and by 2029, 20, 2030, it comes back. We know where it went wrong, and we know where to correct it, because the world has to see the brokenness. I pilau, oh, all of the grave of lust and greed, all of this stuff. But Keoko said, we can fix it. Let me show you how. All of the poison, Monsanto, and everything in the land, you can put hemp and pull out that stuff. Effective, micro, effective microorganisms on the wells in Maui can clean up all heavy metals and stuff that are there in our harbors and everything. Corrective land management of putting peely grass that allows the water to filter through and stay there even in drought conditions because they grew up here over hundreds of thousands of years to the climate and the differentiation, and they allowed the percolation for the water to move. Do not dam up any waters. Get those waters from the prehistoric, the water Konohiki showed me where the caves are 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 feet underground that is not growing limu. And you can Konohiki that for your, lease, your use. Let all the streams flow. And then the ahole hole, the oopu coming back, the limu coming back, fishery coming back. Castle Foundation says kanakas overfish. No, bad water management. You guys created this problem, and then you tack it on the kanaka because you think everybody's ignorant of what's the cause of the opportunity for um, a, expanding abundance and well-being without collapsing the source. So it's not north and south, you kanakas are coming into our ili and moka and stuck in a ball of fish. No, more limu, more fresh water. By the way, they say plenty of fish water. Look at the lake, look, I mean, look at the stream, look at the waterfall. Guess what? That's pollution. Saltwater fish, even though they change when it's time, like salmon to go mating up the estuary, generally fresh water kills them. Put a, put a fresh water, uh, uh, saltwater fish in a fresh water tank and less than couple of minutes, mucky, they cannot eject the salt from them, okay, to balance equilibrium. So what am I saying? The papa'au, 
the papa owl percolates the little bit water and the jacuzzi of the waves, action, turbidity, comes in and it's just right, the Goldilocks effect. And then the limo just bursts out, hiamoi, wake up. I can tell whether the water is, uh, the ocean is La Nina or El Nino in the bloom of the palahalaha. It's supposed to come in April and it's not supposed to come at outside of certain times. It comes April, October. It tells you how warm, because the warmth of the water wakes it up, hiamoi. So kukua limu, they all work together. Invasive, wipe out each other, wipe out everybody else in exclusion of the exclusive hypnia. Doesn't that sound prophetic of what's going on the land? Oh, okay, get back to it, not get distracted. So um, the bottom line is it shouts, the land shouts. If you don't put your feet on the ground, you can't give voice to the land. You can't. You've got to walk the land and listen because you're only a caretaker to give voice to the land and to the sea and to the, mm, doesn't that sound familiar of what the, the prime directive is? Oh my God. Oh, sorry. I didn't do that in, in, in that kind of fashion. But the bottom line is there is a purpose, there is a need, and there's an expectation. Yeah? People have expectation. If you're loving, if you're loving kind, true God, why? Yeah? It's the big why. So now we're telling you from him, and anytime he want to take me up for you know, lying or whatever, he can do because I'm not here to be deceptive. I'm here to give voice to what he asked be done, yeah? And my work, because this is, this is, if you are Kanaka, you know this. Kanaka's a cracker jack, whether it's Paiute or cribbage. Once they learn the rules, they become master. My grandfather, when it came to, I never paid my, grand, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, who had paws like a bear, was Iliko, Uku Pepe nose, no teeth in front, big walrus with the eyes and stuff, scared of Jesus out of you. You know, I'm gonna get you, okay, run, you know, as a kid. The bottom line is, with all of this stuff of what is out there, you have to know, I'll let the thing go. Okay, you have to know where all of this is leading to calm you down. If you carry what you're not supposed to carry, you bust up and you're good for nobody, not even your family. Because the Kamahapuhiva suck you into nothing, yeah? If you know where the plan and where you fit in the plan, you just focus on what's real and true. If can, can, if no can, not yet. Can pick it up later. Nobody put a gun to your head that you have to save the world. That's God's job. Okay, your job is to play your role, whatever it is, what he gave you. And it's all different. The biggest crime is to watch the perfect sunset alone. That's the biggest crime. Because every person, I want to invite the world. You got to get down here now. Because every human being sees something different. And what I think I'm seeing I may enjoy, the next person says something, I said, oh my God, you saw that? I never saw that, I kind of saw that, <laughs> but I never saw that. You know, it's that, it's that relationship with reality that makes life so sweet. Life is a buffet, and it's up to you whether you partake. So if you're a glutton and you eat everything and go to the bathroom and go back for 16 times, that's your choice. And if you're a Puritan and you don't want to touch anything and you want to starve to death, that's your choice. And if you're a veggie or a vegan, that's your choice. So if you just want to go to the, if you want to go to the cakes and pies, again, that's your choice. That's what the life process is all about. Knock yourself out, kids, and, and, and do what, what you want to do, because that's the only way you learn, bus up or not. No one can tell you, pu'upakiki head. You have to learn by experience. Keakua knew it, that's why he let it get bus up, because you're better afterwards in the process, because it aligns and focuses you to be sharp on stone. You sharpen your wits, you sharpen your strategies, by learning, no, don't do that. I've already been down that road, it's a dead end. It looks good, but it's a dead end. It's an illusion. Talk, tell you the truth. This is where it goes back to cultural practice. 
when I take my um, students, or one student, I take them out to Haleakala. There's one place where it looks like a mountain is, a mountain is there. You take the nose flute and you do the chanting on the nose flute. In seconds, the wind and clouds come in and the double purple rainbow goes right over that perceived mountain. It is showing you where Ivikupuna of the Pi'ilani clan is buried up there. And the double purple rainbow is a spirit, a guardian spirit that protects the family, okay? So if you move from the sweet zone and you move down, all of a sudden it breaks apart. It is not one, it's three, yeah? But when you get the zone where it's the place, the right place to chant, it's one, yeah? Same, same. Um, it is a process, and part of the process is there is a place. In our, in our 80,000 years of existence as a people chosen by God from Ki'i and La'ila'i, Ki'i the man, La'ila'i, not from here. They said God, you know, it's from outer space, yeah? Shown through the Po Ele Ele that's 2,300 light years away, and the moon that's up here, the Po Ele Ele is the wormhole from which our family came from and their Mokoauhau genealogy through the sky. And what they did was Akua Noho into Papa, but goes back way before Papa, and they share the existence of existence, that they don't have bodies. So much so that Tutupele, which is part of the family, is totally us, and she's totally the protector and servant of Keakua. It is not separate. The mo'os were given and transformed for our protective strategy to protect from Keakua. Keakua Iyo, the uncreated, created, just like the angels, Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, Satan, Lucifer, free agency, free choice of the children. It's our family. It's not idolatry. That was the shutdown. There is ana ana and evil guys, like Satan and Lucifer, and then there are the worker servants, like Gabriel and um, Raphael and Michael. It's all in play. But the focus was shut you down, make you scared. Put down the screen so we cut you, we oki your power that Keokua gave you for his purpose. So the Iala A is to bring back and to teach how to call the Mo'o, how to anchor. Not all Mo'os are good, but not all people are good. So you can't smash it in and say, this away, a'ule, ole pono. Yeah, you have to do it in a reasonable, holy manner in light of giving glory to Keakua Iho Heavenly Dad. So in this process, you are never alone. And for Kanaka, we time travel a lot. To Tupele, always the old crone and stuff. So when I have to do practice and it's ancient, I am too young. I'm 58 going on 59. That's too young. You have to be kupuna. So what happens is the hair turns white and this Uncle Mike, you're turning white and it just turns all white, and I get 83, and I'm this, this guy, salt and pepper here, and one week later, all the hair turning white. And it's because certain things are so sacred, there is a law, a spiritual law of what can and no can. So you jump the super highway, and there is no time. And so when it's a tutupele chant, like tutupele, in the chant for Hanaho Magazine, um, they said, do a chant. And so I said, okay. I do a Pele chant, and I go back to 27 in the chant, no wrinkles, Elvis. Okay, I wish I can hold that. Because once you stop, brah, okay, I'd be rich if I could bottle it and sell it. But it is what is in the Mokohau second pico. Everybody has it. It can turn on at any time. The reason why it doesn't turn on, fear. If you're afraid, it will not come because you're protecting yourself, which means you can't hold it. You cannot handle, Randall. So what happens is, if there's no tutu and you go to the stream, oh, tutu, 
That beautiful woman who's licking her hair with her three-foot tongue. Oh, yeah, 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 that's too, too, mo. Uh. She's just cleaning herself, but we don't bother her when she's, she does. She get angry if you do. Later on, she'll talk to you. In fact, you can write her on the back, you know, when her time to play, you know, in Wailua Nui, not this one, but Maui. So, but, you know, the bottom line is, it's all real and true. It's only family, you know. There's nothing to be afraid of. So if you're inculcated young, there is no fear, and you know when, like, don't bother mama when she's watching that show. The TV's gonna fly your way. There's, there's a right time and a wrong time for everybody, yeah? Kapu, don't walk through that front door or every nail is gonna fly your way. So you, you, you're taught when can, when cannot, yeah? So all in process. So in doing the royal patents, um, the fraud is all out there. Let me tell you the fraud. This is the part that you heard about, but you need proof of who, what, when, where, how. Sanford P. Dole, the provisional president of the illegal uh, republic, he went in August and July of 1902 and either scratched out or they retyped out the royal allodio patents to um, Fee whole fee simple because they wanted to cockroach the land. Mika hela kikao nohi, 500,000 acres where the base of William Charles Luna Lilo's estate comes from. And she was the, one of the largest landholders ever. Mika hela kikao nohi at the fraud. So what you're here to is identify the fraud and the fulcrum of the fraud. This is the fraud, okay? Sanford P. Dole. He goes and he retypes up and he puts down Mika Hela Kikaonohi, which is a, it, this is a total laugh, forever, for the 42,000 acres, for Barber's Point, Pu'uloa, and it goes right through um, Hono Uli Uli, and they say, fijo, less than a lorio. There are certain people who go around telling, and there are Kanakas, and are a PhD, that a lorio and fijo, fee simple, are one and the same. So why does it say less than instead of equal to? If it's equal to, it's equal to, and you don't have to make a distinction, which is a separation. When it says aloyo, it says higher than. Why isn't it saying equal to? So I sigh that some people don't get it. And why don't they get it? Because they read the books on Hawaiian aloyo titles from Hawaii authors, that is the shutdown. They didn't go to the source, Nana Ike Kumo, and go to Kamehameha and the Privy Council documents and what was passed. Because that's where you get Bouvier, which is not blacks, and that's where you find out it's not equal to. It's higher than, forever. So they knew it. They, Campbell, Castle, Cook, all the Greenwells, um, all of them who wanted to extinct the next generation, they wanted to wipe them out, and they were going after it. That's why you got the couple children. They were couple couple. Why the couple? Did they kept on passing them around and changing the name. So try to give Caesar what is Caesar when everybody is being hidden and passed and changed, and you're trying to you're trying to show a direct line, and it goes zig and it goes zag and it goes up and and down, because the missionaries knew what Ana Alorio was not equal to. It was Hawaiians forever, so if we kill them off, then it's mines, my precious. It's mines, it's mines. So they were systematically hunting down. Keho Kololi had eight daughters. The blue-eyed princesses were everywhere, you know, and Queen Liliokalani would stop off and see her half-sisters, you know. So there were so many children that were being passed left, passed right, take off this, take off that, to protect the future generation. So. This outs the fraud certified. And then what you have to do is go back to Kamehameha III, where certified all of the lands and the apanas under King Kamehameha III on Alodio. This happened before that. That's the fulcrum of the fraud. Now you have identified the fraud. You made your case. Foundation of standing of eminent harm. You have deprived my family from all that they should have received, interest and penalty, and it's cumulative, it's continuation right now, okay? 
That's what is real and true. And they out themselves consistently. You have to persevere and keep on a going. Carry your water because it's your family. The reason why I, like the Japanese zero pilot in Hoseko, was willing to get in my little zero plane and take it down to the deck of Hoseko, make sure we hit the mark. And I'm going to take myself up, and I'm going to take you with me. That's what you need to get into a fight. If you're not willing to get in your little zero plane and go to the deck of the aircraft carrier and take out everybody, you should not be in the battle. Because you don't have what it takes. Because you got to give up everything to do what you have to do. And if you're the chosen one that has to do it, guess what, baby? That's the only way it's going to happen, yeah? Because my mom slaps me in the head and says, don't ask why. <laughs> Kekua wanted you to do it. So don't go looking left or right or whatever. You're the one. Like it or not, you're the one. So move on, okay? Don't be self-indulgent of the Kamaha poor me syndrome. Just do. Carry your water. Don't, don't wonder. Just do it, and it will work out. So you have to have the right stuff if you're going to do it. Otherwise, you're going to pull out at the last minute. You got to keep it focused. Keep on going. Don't stop going. Keep on going. We're almost there. Keep on going. You know, you have to have that fighter's instinct to complete the mission. Yeah, whatever the mission is, it's a sacrifice. Play chess, you got to sacrifice the rook, the pawn, sometimes even the queen to win the war. You know, and you've got to be capable and ready to go. Come. 